Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. We don't have uh, structural collapses very often in our neck of the woods, so uh, we're, we're really kind of not sure about how long the repairs are going to take. The wet, heavy snow did more than just get cars stuck over the weekend. It caused roofs to collapse at least five separate times in the FM area. Valley News Team's Rose Itzkovitz looks at the damage, the long road ahead to clean it up, and what you can do to avoid your own cave-in. That's not snow you're looking at. It's insulation. The whole middle of the church has dropped down where we had our eating area. Luckily, no one was hurt at Moorhead St. Francis de Sales Catholic Church, one of two Moorhead locations with major roof damage on Sunday. Both locations, the roof collapse has also damaged the uh, gas piping, natural gas piping to the buildings. And so it's not only affecting um, the structure itself from elements, but also from a uh, heating standpoint. So what went wrong? Deputy Chief Walling says that nonstop wet, heavy snow from Saturday didn't give us time to keep up. We're really used to seeing dry snow, powdery snow in our area, and accumulations aren't a big deal. And I think a lot of folks were caught off guard. And if there's even a small structure issue, you may not know about it until it's too late. Wet heavy snow like this will uh, kind of cue you into building problems you maybe didn't know that you had or to weaker areas of a structure. We're told the damage could take months to fix, but right now there's still a lot of unknowns. Do you have an estimate of how much damage it is? Or Do not at this time. It'll be quite a bit to fix what's came down. We lost the rafters in the middle of the church, so we lost the whole section. And with at least six more inches of snow on the way, Wallen says to stay on top of the upkeep, but not from on top of your roof. Adding to that weight load while you're trying to get that wet, heavy snow off. But instead, to get a nice long roof rake like this one, to safely shovel from the ground. As for the church in Moorhead, members are doing what they can in damage control. We're just removing snow off the other parts of the roof that wasn't collapsed to protect the rest of the church. In Moorhead, Roseskowitz, Valley News Live. Deputy Chief Wallen says with this heavy amount of snow, you'll also want to clear off your vent stacks to prevent sewer gas buildup in the house and to clear out your furnace intakes to avoid carbon monoxide hazards. Finally, a break from the snow. We should enjoy it while it lasts because another winter storm is right around the corner. Hutch, is it looking mild this evening too? Uh, pretty quiet, as a matter of fact. We do have some clear skies, but off in the distance on our tower cam, you can see some high clouds that are shifting in from the north. Satellite shows those pretty clearly. Not a lot of snow falling from those clouds. That's good news. Look at the warm weather punching into the western Dakotas. We're warming up here too, and tonight promises to bring a little bit of a smorgasbord of weather. We'll see temperatures slipping back into the teens, but the south wind does increase overnight, as do the clouds. So temperatures will be steady to slowly warming as we go through the deep part of the overnight hours. Same thing goes in Grand Forks. So we get through our night tonight very quiet. It'll be very mild for start your day temperatures. We do have some good news to talk about in the weather uh, over the next seven days, but a significant storm system that will be very impactful to many across the nation, not only mm -hmm. just right here in the valley. I'll spell all that out in a few minutes. All right. Thanks, Hutch. Mm -hmm. A local mom is speaking out after her Facebook post warning of three men taking pictures of her young daughter went viral over the weekend. The woman says it happened at Best Buy in Fargo Saturday afternoon, adding the man uh, who took the photo with his phone and it was down by his waist and he kept backing up to get closer to her daughter, making the mother worry about her daughter being kidnapped or trafficked. If you're taking a picture of your buddies, why are you looking at my daughter and looking at your phone and angling it towards her? It was more in selfie mode than it was in forward mode. Hear more about what this mother and the men accused have to say tonight at 6 on Valley News Live. A Grand Forks man is facing a gross sexual imposition charge in a case involving a victim under the age of 15. Court documents state a Grand Forks Elementary School counselor contacted police in December of 2017 with concerns of a child being sexually abused. The victim's sibling told the counselor that 32-year-old Derek Mortrude would pull down his sister's pants and start to have you-know-what with her. There is currently a warrant out for Mortrude's arrest. We'll have much more on this story tonight on Valley News Live at 10. 
One man is dead after a three-car crash in Ottertail County. Authorities say it happened just before 6 Monday morning on Highway 210, west of County Road 86. 51-year-old Anthony Thacker stopped his van to clear frost from the vehicle and was hit by a car. The van spun out into the road and was broadsided by another vehicle. Thacker was taken to the hospital and then died. His passenger was injured but is expected to be okay. They're both from Portsmouth, Ohio. No one else was hurt. Roads were snow-covered and icy at the time. Indonesia's government has grounded all Boeing 737 MAX 8 passenger jets after an Ethiopian Airlines MAX 8 crashed over the weekend. China and Ethiopia have also grounded the aircraft. It's the second crash of that plane in six months. The Ethiopian Airlines jet took off Sunday and almost immediately began experiencing problems and crashed. In October of last year, a 737 MAX 8 flown by Indonesia's Lion Air crashed 13 minutes after takeoff from Jakarta. Flight recorders have been found from the Ethiopian jetliner. One was damaged. Gray television analyst Greta Van Susteren discusses the crash of that Ethiopian Airlines flight over the weekend. Greta has reported on many crashes and has done airline crash litigation when she was a lawyer. Um, I admit that uh, my eye would be on my eyes would be wide getting on on an airplane like that, but I also know intellectually um, that the chances of dying in a, a crash are slim, and that there are remedies for troubled airplanes and troubled software, and you need very good pilots. But uh, and that's why I think they're not being grounded by Southwest and Americans because there are remedies. Van Susteren says the NTSB will likely be heavily involved in the investigation because there were Americans on board and because Boeing is an American manufacturer. The latest revenue projections from Moody's Analytics show North Dakota's oil and gas production will likely hit production records by July of 2021. If it holds true, it'll mean more money for lawmakers to spend. Moody's is one of two reports that lawmakers will use to set their budget for the next biennium. Within a small community, a farming community where accidents happen all the time, that extra time of them helping could, as you heard, save a life. After an accident, time can make the difference between life and death, especially when you live in rural communities, and EMTs have to travel to your location. Now, local middle school students have a plan to solve the problem and help their school as well. Valley News Team's education reporter Veronica Marshall has our story. My dad's friend, he was in a car accident a few years ago outside of our town. And when they called the hospital, they're like, oh yeah, I'll take at least half an hour to get to you. And he didn't make it. Experiences like these inspired 18 eighth grade students to make a difference. If like people in the town could know what to do if someone got hurt, it could like help potentially like save the life. The students are creating an app so victims or bystanders can show first responders the scene long before they arrive. We visited the local dispatch center. We had visitors come here just so we gained background knowledge. We created an information part in our app where you can like search things online and you can like figure out what to do. They'll now be able to see not only what you're saying or you're describing, they'll be able to assess the situation as a whole and look at other symptoms. And the community benefits from the students' work in more ways than one. The project is part of Samsung's Solve for Tomorrow Challenge, and Northern Cass is in the finals, earning the school rewards and recognition. Now we're national finalists where we get to go to New York, and the three students get to present in front of a panel. We've won $50,000. We have a chance of $100,000, which is just life-changing in a smaller school for technology. To see Northern Cass and like North Dakota along with like California and like all the other big schools, it's just mind-blowing. But win or lose, the students have already learned a valuable lesson. Once I got involved, I realized that we could actually like make a difference. And if you want to help out, you can. Vote for Northern Cass's video online and the school could win an extra $10,000. In Cass County, Veronica Marshall, Valley News Live. You can vote for Northern Cass's video every day until March 27th, and you can find a link to it on our website, valleynewslive.com. You can get a free short stack of buttermilk pancakes and support some good causes simply by going to IHOP tomorrow. IHOP restaurants will be celebrating IHOP free pancake day from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. 
The promotion is called Flip It Forward for Kids, and it helps kids fighting to overcome illnesses by donating to IHOP's charity partners. Officials say their goal is to raise $4 million for Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, and Shriners Hospitals for Children. A tragic